Hey everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit, and I am very excited to come back with the newest addition to my pen habit, this little monster. So this is probably one of the most iconic fountain pens out there. Um, it's a Mont Blanc Meisterstück, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. You can correct me if I'm not. Meisterstück number 149. Um, and I don't know a ton about the, the way Mont Blanc does their numbering, but essentially I think 149 means the style and size and everything. Uh, this, is, this is an iconic pen. I, f I happen to find this uh, pre-owned because I would never pay what the list price is for a new one of these for a pen. I say that now. I might change my mind in a couple of years. But I found this pre-owned at a, a store in Seattle called World Lux and uh, really like it. Got it kind of on a whim, wasn't planning on getting anything, which just this just goes to show you. If you're not planning on getting a pen, don't go into a pen store. Because if you go into a pen store and you're an addict like I am, you will end up getting a pen even though you didn't plan on it. So, uh, this is... Uh, this is the Mont Blanc 149. It is a pretty pen. It's a big, big pen. So um, I normally write with my pens posted, but you'll notice unposted, this thing is a monster. Uh, it's, it's just big. Posted, it's way too heavy to write with for me and, and kind of balanced. It's not well balanced. Um, quick review of, of what the pen looks like. Um, you know, it's your standard cigar shaped pen but very large black uh black precious resin um has gold fittings you know standard clip nothing too spectacular the uh the tip has the white six pointed star and from what i've read online this is supposed to be like a top down view of mont, mont blanc itself um They've got uh, a triple gold band here, and right around the uh, the center band are the words Mont Blanc, Meisterstück 149, or number 149. And then there is a uh, another gold band here for trim. This is a piston fill pen, um, so the, uh, you know, the, the end screws open and screws back closed again to fill the pen. Um, it's, I have ink in, in here now, or I would demonstrate it. If I demonstrated it, it would probably end up spilling, spewing ink all over creation. But um, this one came with a 4810 nib medium, and it's a 14 karat nib. And it has on the nib um, Mont Blanc 585. I don't know entirely what that means, but, uh, and I can show you some pictures of that. So, you know, it's a, it's a standard nib. It has an ink window right here. Um, that you may or may not be able to see. I don't have it backlit very well, um, but uh, you can tell whether or not there's ink. I'm actually nearly out of ink, so I probably need to refill this shortly. Uh, again, very it's a it's a weighty pen. This is a this is a substantial pen. This probably well not probably this is without question the largest pen I own. Um, it verges for me right on the edge of being too big to write with, but it's caused me to actually, um, I've been doing some handwriting exercises to try to improve my handwriting a little bit now that I've gotten into it. And, uh, and this act actually helps me because it is so big. I tend to really grasp my pen hard and this has kind of forced me to, to grasp it a little bit more loosely. The one thing that I'm not super thrilled about is, and you may or may not be able to see it, right at the edge of the section here, it kind of flares back out. And I, when I hold this pen, sometimes the, the flared section tends to sit right on my finger. It can get a little annoying. Um, again, it's not, not a huge deal, but you know, it's just a really nice pen. Writes beautifully. This is probably one of the smoothest pens I've ever used. So, um, yeah, here's uh, here's the basic Mont Blanc 149, and uh, we will do a writing sample next. So, here we go. Okay, so here we are with the Mont Blanc 149 Meisterstück, and. Uh, I'm actually not inked up anymore. I had to clean out the pen between when I recorded the intro and when I did this. So I'm going to go ahead and fill the pen now. So um, I'm using uh, Iroshizuku's Konpeki. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is a piston fill pen. So basically, uh, you just take the, take the nib, 
dip it in the ink, unscrew it to open it up. And uh, I'm actually not going to fill it all the way up. I don't need, need it filled all the way, but I am gonna fill it a little bit of the way and screw it back closed. You're good to go. Then you just take the uh, paper towel or a rag or whatever and clean off the nib and the section. And we should be good to proceed. And just to be safe, I'm gonna cap this and put it away. Okay, so let us start with the writing sample. So this is the, oh, Blanc. And this is a 14 karat gold nib in medium. We are writing in Roshizuku Konpeki. And uh, of course, we are on Rhodia dot pad. 80 grams. Okay, so as you can see, this is, uh, this writes very, very smoothly. And for a pen that costs as much as this one does, one would hope that smoothness is certainly on the list of, uh, of attributes one might expect from said pen. Um, but this one, this one does not disappoint at all. So, uh, let's just do uh, a little quotation here. Writes very nicely, and uh, of course, from Gypsy. As I said, I'm a musical theater nerd. There's just nothing you're going to do to get that out of me. Um, this, and by the way, this ink has just a beautiful shading. I, I think this is probably one of the most popular uh, inks from the Orochizuku line from Pilot, and it's uh, it's. I can understand why. I originally thought it was too light, but the more I use it, the more I really have started to like it quite a bit. Okay. So let's, uh, let's talk line variation. So as a gold nib, one might expect that there's a fair bit of line variation, but this nib is actually pretty stiff. You have to push pretty hard in order to get some variation. You can, um, but it's not, uh, it's not as flexible as, as um, some others might think. And frankly, I find that the amount of pressure on this nib necessary to make it, or make it flex at all is such that it just doesn't, it ruins the, the whole process of writing smoothly. Now, um, I may have mentioned this before in the video, I can't remember, but uh, I'm actually, because this nib is 14 karat, it should, I should be able to have it um, adjusted by a nibmeister. So I'm thinking about having this one sent in to increase the amount of flex on the nib. I'm not sure if that's really worth it or not. Um, I also think I'd like to get this ground down to a fine point instead of a medium. You know, I paid far, far, far less than the original price on this one. So for a used one, I, I wouldn't mind paying that little extra. Um, in terms of uh, smoothness, it really, this is probably the smoothest pen I own. It's just beautiful. Um, it's very, very wet, you can see here. Um, and don't don't misconstrue the gaps in my drawing for uh, or for my scribbles for that's just lack of hand control. But you'll notice it's it's exceptionally wet, um, and this is a, this ink actually dries pretty quickly. So um, to to have that kind of wetness is is a good thing, um, I, and I enjoy it's just a nice juicy happy nib, and I have never had it exhibit any problems with keeping up with me. Um, 
I'd write quickly, but I can't think of things to say. Um, Uh, I know that some people also are interested in how the pen writes um, upside down. You can get a very, very fine line on this pen upside down. Um, it's exceptionally scratchy, but if you just need a, a very thin, and you can't do it side to side, it will only work if you pull the pen this way. Um, obviously, my suggestion is if you're going to do any upside down writing, do it very, very lightly, especially on a pen like this. It's not meant to be used that way, and you'll notice as soon as I did that, I got a little bit of skipping right there. But for the most part, uh, I have really enjoyed this Meisterstuhl 149 from Mont Blanc. Um, I've actually, because the pen is so large, I have found that I have needed to um, hold it further up the barrel than I normally hold my pens. Normally I would hold my pen down here, but as I mentioned in the video, the flange on the edge of the section is really um, can be uncomfortable for me to hold down here and I find that I actually get smoother and more uh, a nicer handwriting if I hold it a little bit further down the barrel. So I think that will do it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. I'm sure there will be more videos coming up.